Okay, good evening. Welcome to the Hurley Investments Market View Commentary for Monday, the 28th of, oh, where am I the way in October? Taking a quick peek and looking over things. I'm going to start this a little bit different today. Instead of going through a market recap, I'm going to go down to what matters most for us right out of the gate. Wednesday, we have a Fed interest rate hike. Our whole week, in my opinion, will hang on Wednesday's economic reports, Apple and Facebook earnings. And then the end of the week, we have the average work week uh, reports. So our week is going to be based on, for all intents and purposes, news. It's going to be news driven. That's what will will move us. Now, if you noticed, I said interest rate hike. Uh, two of you typed, uh, <laughs> typed in interest rate cut, not hike, right? That is the question. They're not going to hike the interest rates. But they penciled themselves or they penciled the economy into a corner. They almost have to do a rate cut, but they will most likely say that's going to be it for a while. And they might remove some language where they're no longer data dependent. So it'll be interesting to see, and I'll be listening to every word that comes out Wednesday on what their statement says. But it'll be the third policy easing of the year. I guess they said they're going to remove the, the wording act as appropriate. I just... We just don't seem to have enough ammunition to fight off a recession or a global slowdown if we, we use up a lot of our arrows when, when our markets are doing so well. Uh, Mod said something is not right. I have two that typed in uh, unnecessary cut, which I would agree 100%. And I think it could also be viewed as a disappointment if we don't have that fourth one that everyone's expecting in December. We don't need it. Um, once again, I think our government's pretty immature to be requesting or wanting a rate cut in times of prosperity to make easy money even easier. I mean, for crying out loud, you're killing me. Uh, Powell was probably not the best person to put into this position. So here I am ripping on the government. Doesn't surprise me, but I'm disappointed in where we're going. Shocked that short sellers lose $1.4 billion in a single day. This brings me up to my next point. Some people ask me, Kevin, you're not using short calls in your caller trades right now. And in all honesty, uh, of course not. I have a hard time right now 
looking at at capping us to the upside. We're in a historical or seasonal bull run in our markets. Being in this historic, typical bull run, I would suspect that it's not a time that you would choose or want to cap yourself to the upside. For that reason, um, uh, it's been a while. In fact, it's been a long while since I've been capping myself using a short call. That doesn't mean that as new money came in, I would cap Disney at 150, cap Boeing at 400. We capped Facebook at 1050. I think we did 190s on, on Visa. We didn't make a lot of money. But we did protect ourselves for some new money coming in. Everyone else, for the most part, we're trying to make some money. Sorry. Uh, not only are we trying to make some money, but in portfolios, I've gone to some leap long calls. And I've decided, you know what? The time is right to have some leap long calls on Disney, on Visa. And we took profits along the way at the 150 when it was trading at 160. We're in Facebook. We've been in uh, Bank of America that we've been systematically taking some of these positions off that are making some pretty darn good money. So with that said, looking at the short side, I worry about some of the short sellers that haven't had the opportunity to, to think shorting the market through. That just might be my best way to say it. Anytime you're gonna take some unlimited risk, basically trying to call a top in the market, which if you look at a chart, they could be, but to do it on an individual stock, even one as poorly run as Tesla, you run the risk of getting burned. And I bet that 1.4 billion or one, 1 billion in one day, I thought it was 1.4. Um, probably gonna tell me that they earned all those by doing this in the past. That we made 1.4 billion by doing exactly what we've done every single time, it always works. In all honesty, a prudent money manager will tell you it'll always work until it doesn't. That's why I call or trade. I call or trade, use protective puts where I'm willing to say, you know what? I don't know everything. And because I don't know everything, I'm not willing to guess at tops and so forth. I'm willing to protect because I know the risk is ridiculously high that when we start our next pullback, our next correction, it could lead us so past a bear market that it could lead us to the worst drop as a percentage and as a dollar figure and U.S. history, it really could make a Great Depression. We could beat the percentages of drops in our stock market than our Great Depression ever did. And yes, mathematically and using some logic, you could look at a S&P 500 back down to 1260, 1265. And that's doing nothing more than backing out the government stimulus 
and letting the markets take their pain, take their medicine, right? Not a gloom and doom, just adding the numbers up. Uh, today came out after a new record. These are the stocks Wall Street thinks will lead the market higher. Apple, JP Morgan, the banks, right? Moved up to this point. Facebook, Disney, and Salesforce are taking over. Thank goodness. <laughs> Right? Thank goodness they put Facebook and Disney in there. And they didn't quite put Google, right? Pretty sure Google did not do so well today. I really should take a peek at it. Although our pre market is up, that was Alphabet. Which is Google, Google L. It dipped on its earnings miss. Earnings 1012 versus 1024. As much as 4% is a missed earnings expectations. Down only 2%. It'll be interesting to see how it how it gets it tomorrow. But for me, we're in Facebook, we're in Disney. Leap long calls for a lot of people. We got out of Facebook at 200 way back when. Converted into leap long calls. So those that used to own Facebook shares are in 100% risk-free positions using their profits there. Those of us that are newer into it that maybe could not afford the shares or have moved into a Facebook after we last got out, we've done a leap long call position at 200 will be nicely profitable on facebook at 220 will be ridiculously profitable on facebook and it's been a slog it's been a crappy 12 months but we do a little dollar cost averaging on facebook and disney as we can cut the price in half and add some more shares on and off we go um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I love this one. A billionaire, Ron Barron, sees the Dow at 650,000 in 50 years, about 25 times higher than it is today. And it's funny because as I'm trying to teach my kids about the stock market, a lot of their comment was, you should just let it, you know, just sit and leave it, Dad. In 50 years, you'll be dead and we'll have a lot of money, right? You can take 280000 and 25 times higher than it is today. I wonder what that would be. Let me do, <laughs> since I'm here, let's find out what my kids want out of me, right? 25000 or excuse me, 280000 times 25 times they're looking at having it be worth about seven million dollars now i i have to admit i love that my thoughts uh that my kids are thinking about this that they're using math and going oh that could be a lot of money and i don't think they calculated out that two hundred eighty thousand dollars would be about seven million 25 times higher but boy, what was I tempted to point out to him over this time period? In fact, there are a couple things as I think about it, but there are two that really stand out. What do you think I was going to point out to him during this time period? <laughs> Cost of living will also go up. Inflation. $7 million today will definitely not be $7 million 50 years from now. In fact, with the way the dollar is and the risk of the dollar, um, you go buy a meal at a restaurant. $7 million down the road might only be worth, realistically, you know, worst case scenario, about $500,000 of today's money. Might be like it only doubled once. Um, probably closer to about a 1.25 million. Uh, down, 
in 50 years there will be trillionaires very possibly <laughs> um second thing you'd have to just sit and leave it which brings me to the third thing is there's so much you could do to better your return than just letting something sit and leave it over a broad-based period of time. You can dollar cost average, you can add protection. You can try to pick the most undervalued like Warren Buffett has done and significantly beat market averages over periods of time. Uh, we had a client ask us about that period of time today. You should see some significant growth in your collar trading at somewhere between the 12 to the 18 month mark. Sometimes you're going to sit in a forward or a dizzy, which is kind of slogged around sideways. But when it does move, four should be up at 17. Disney should be at 196. There will be some explosive movement sometime. The question is, do you have the patience and is the protection on for you to wait out the time periods until these stocks really move? Uh, kind of interesting for him to make such a call, but to understand how little it may really be down the road. Uh, Goldman Sachs, I'm keeping up on Fisher Investments. I love that they've lost more than 2.7. I actually thought I've seen that they've lost over 6 billion right now. So this is just uh, for me, letting some people know that there are some things you can apologize for when you say them. There are some things you cannot. Love it. In all honesty, I absolutely love it. Somehow this is my list that I wish I could uh, start calling on these people and saying, hey, I'll manage some of your money. Um, where else am I going? Oh, I love this one. Billionaire Jeffrey Finnick closes a hedge fund in less than a year after its relaunch. This probably isn't a fair thing to say, but if you're a billionaire and you have 500 million dollars of assets under management and your funds can't beat the market or come anywhere close and you're charging ridiculous fund fees or you're trying to do a hedge fund part of it at a two or 20, Long short equities, oh my gosh. Again, why the hell would anyone short an equity in our historic greatest bull run? Oh yeah, because you're trying to time a top. You're trying to call the top. Boy, I just don't get it. But I love seeing the Fidelity Fund Manager, the Magellan Fund Manager, crash and burn it really puts a smile to my face with that said unfortunately uh my main contact uh, manny has moved on from um e-trade apparently he was a casualty of the zero commission fees they cut out some upper management, feeling they no longer need those individuals. So unfortunately, something we hadn't thought about was part of part of free fees for trading stocks now has cost some people their jobs. And it's not higher, you know, I should say it's mid, you know low to mid management maybe uh, has lost their job on the pressure to cut fees, which is disappointing because obviously we might uh, not get the cream of the crop coming to, to our help. 
equities, uh, really nice week last week. Couple interesting pops in technology. Uh, well, I should say broad gains all the way across the board. Interesting to see that we had uh, a move last week and that uh, adding a percent, we you know 1.2 on the S&P 500 is usually pretty good. If you're gonna ask me, what am I looking at or what can I suggest to you? Patience and let the earnings season run its course. A add on or chase some stocks after the earnings. I'm looking to maybe add some more by way of Visa. Visa didn't take off. Little disappointed that Visa hasn't moved like I thought it would. But it doesn't mean Oh, come on. But it doesn't mean that it can't go higher. It's just not moving as fast as I think it should. Slow isn't necessarily bad either. We're back above the 50-day. Resistance one pivot point. I'd expect to see it get closer to probably uh, 187. And really, I think it'd get closer to probably the 192. And all I'm doing is looking at a chart and saying, you know what? Higher highs might put it closer to that pivot point, the R2 resistance second level pivot point at 192. If I was to take this out a little bit farther in time, Took it a little farther in time. Last year's last year's end of the year was pretty awful. The year before, pretty darn good, 20%. Year before, we had a dip and then pretty good run. So again, we do have some opportunity in Visa. I do think you had some profit taking in some of these down years. If you do have profit taking through November, December, usually we'll see the upward run coming January through the first quarter. And obviously that's because they do excellent. They, uh, they just went through Christmas. Of course they're going to do extremely well. It'll be interesting to see how uh, how they end up, but I'm looking at uh, 74 up to 90, $15, about 20%, 105 to 124, $20, uh, you know, 20-ish percent there. We had to go from 145 down to 120, but then you had a pretty good run there. So I'm just looking at it thinking, you know, we've, we've got some opportunity. There is some opportunity here with Visa. On the flip side, holy cow. Apple's been overbought for two months. And really it hit a low of 170 and has just gone up to 250. If people have been looking at me, adding puts, rolling puts, rolling puts, 215 puts were not sufficient. 250 puts are very helpful. But when you see a $70 move on a price of $170, 
we've just witnessed Apple make a run. And now obviously it's not a yearly run. It, it's only up, you know, 38% or 40% or whatever it is. But uh, 70 divided by 170 is a 41% run from the lows to the highs that it's at right now over June through October. Someone asked me, Kevin, why do you keep rolling long puts and losing money? You've done it three times. Will someone please tell me what I would say to them? Will someone please tell me, why the heck am I rolling long puts three times for a loss on Apple from like 215 up to 250? <laughs> Way to go, Lance. Lance knows me. Because it's run too far too fast. I agree 100%. It has run too far too fast. I've even got some people with deep in the money, long calls that I'm putting protection on. To protect profits there. Which if they blow it, I'll cash in those long calls and I'll let the long puts run. Because they most likely, the place that I see that they would come back down to, you might say, oh, there's a little bit there. Yeah, not much. It's right down here. That's where you build a base. 220 would be to the downside on Apple if they don't hit their earnings. Again, not support, not support. It's a couple days. It's not building a base. This is my example of where I'd say running too far too fast. The good news is on the Dow, we still have room to the upside before we come over, over bought on the RSI. I would suspect being rather close to, to um, to the 50 day that this is where we're going to run into all time highs pushed by Apple's, the Facebook's. Uh, next week, the Disney's and so forth. Oops, sorry. S and P, a little more space between the 50-day, a little less space to run higher. We might see it run into the overbought like it was in April of last year. Didn't stay there long. Most indexes do not stay over about for a long period of time. And uh, the NASDAQ looks very similar to the S&P. A wider gap or dispersion from the 50-day to the current price and very little Space between that and the overbought on the RSI, I expect it to react somewhat similar to, to uh, April, but that's after we go through two to three weeks maybe being overbought. Uh, I'm going to have to admit we're looking at a 2.25% October. We might have the best October that ranks in the top five or six since post-World War II. Earnings, uh, I haven't sprinkled in there. Uh, I am going to be interested to watch General Motors tomorrow. Uh, MasterCard tomorrow will really catch my eye. Uh, Wednesday, CF Companies, Chesapeake, Dominion. 
Uh, I won't pay any attention to you, uh, HLF, which is uh, Herbal Life. But Pfizer, Square, Starbucks, T-Mobile, Steel, X Steel, Apple, Facebook. Thursday, international paper, Sprint Yum will be interesting. Shake Shack if you got into them. Fridays, the oils, the Chevron, the Exxon, the Heinz companies. Heinz companies will probably not do so well. Uh, big economic reports to start Wednesday. ADP employment, GDP, FOM rate decision. Big possible moving day, up or down. In fact, you're looking at a whipsaw day. Boy, does it set up for the end of this week. ADP employment, GDP in the morning, rate decision in the afternoon, a whipsaw day brewing. Thursday, personal income, personal spending, initial claims, a whipsaw day pending. Not only that, personal income and personal spending are both expected to grow by 0.03. So we're looking for follow through. If the GDP can beat a little bit, you would expect personal income, personal spending will beat, and you can run into the end of the week being a little more bullish. Uh, Friday, average work week reports with non-farm payroll, private payroll, unemployment rate, construction spending, auto and truck for those of us that are in Ford, ISM index. Internationally, not a whole lot, just Europe has their GDP and Inflation. I have some earnings here that I've listed just so you keep them in mind. Really, it's uh, this week, Apple, Facebook. Next week, we'll see Baidu, CVS, Disney. Um, those are the ones that we're more invested in that I'm anxious to see where those end up. With that said, I'm going to let this group know I will not be available for tomorrow for the... Um, the trade findings and adjustments. So I will see how my time allows me to either pre record something. Keeve is also busy, so he will not be actively doing it uh, either. So we're going to apologize. We've run into a bit of a delay. Not only that, but we're looking to have our first really good snowstorm here in Utah hit uh, tomorrow. So it'll be interesting to see. Questions. What questions do you guys have that I can answer for you tonight? What thoughts are on your mind that I can answer for you? Kevin, are you only doing protective puts on Apple? Question mark why? And so I bet where you're going with that one, Lance, is if you see low support and it, you're saying it might fall down, why aren't you doing a full collar? And I get it. The problem is if I was to look at Apple, man, I'd probably want to go out to 280. A round number, we got 30 to the downside, 30 to the upside, just to be safe. In which case, I don't know, maybe you got to a December monthly. 280, I'd get a whopping 77 to 83 cents. Midpoint is 80. For 80 cents, I'm not interested in capping myself to the upside. Apple seems to be the darling. We're having a darling run. This is how Apple used to run in the past. It would double. If we were at 169, 170, I honestly think in the next year, knowing Apple's past history, knowing the iPhone super cycle that we're up against, I could see Apple being at 340 in the next 6 to 12 months. I'm not necessarily looking to cap myself through this big run. And if I can go back to an email you sent last week, Kevin, what gives? 
you're only up 13, you know, 1.3 million on 10.8, which is true, but really this started out more at 7.2 at the beginning of the year. Recently have picked up about four that falls in this category and another seven or eight for 401k and so forth. Yeah, I'm not being the market completely, but in general, I'm awfully darn close. Facebook, Apple, Disney, Baidu, that could change people's uh, portfolios dramatically. What I mean dramatically, for people that have had the patience, We've got 128 long call contracts. We've got another 10 of 120 calls. We've got 7,000 shares of protective puts. A gentleman's doing a couple uh, bullish bets on it. Disney. We don't own a little bit of Disney. We've got 500 shares not covered. We've got 117, so that's 11,700 shares. Uh, some calls sprinkled on through. Facebook. Thousand shares and over 110 leap contracts. Where's my fourth one? Apple, right? Covered calls, bull calls, leap calls, 5,900 shares, another deep in the money, long calls. Uh, there's a lot going on that makes a significant difference in people's portfolios. So the short answer, getting back to you, is yes, I've got the confidence that once again, I'll be okay in general of beating the S&P 500. There's some people that are in some smaller portfolios that we might be in an Apple, Under Armour, Ford, where none of them have really gone up yet. Uh, some Visa that just hasn't moved yet quick enough for the leaps. I get it doesn't mean that it can't and the interesting comment was that well you guys have all this experience but i'm not as comfortable as you are yet which i kind of chuckled because it's interesting to think that you're comfortable with seeing things not move the way i'd like them to as fast as i'd like them to and that doesn't mean i'm comfortable with seeing a portfolio suck <laughs> That is my calmest demeanor to say it. But I've, you know, this isn't my first rodeo. I've seen the collar trades work. I've made the mistake of getting out of a Boeing and succumbing to the peer pressure of, oh, you know what? Get me out of the thing, it never moves. Capping a, an NVIDIA. Uh, I'm just not going to make foolish, amateurish, or the same mistakes that I've made in the past, I'm not looking to make again in, uh, in my current trading. I want to learn from them. So interesting, interesting comments have been made to me this week, and I'm more than willing to answer them with uh, obviously facts, figures, and past experience. You guys shouldn't ever feel afraid of saying, Kevin, you know, what gives? And if you think I haven't had a couple times where I've had someone that's even here today basically say, uh, Kevin, you know, what the hell? <laughs> I've got it. I've been there. I've heard it. It's okay. You're not going to offend me. That's part of being a money manager is having those questions asked having some people not understand and again i ask for patience where 
hey, have you seen us pick up shares here? Have you seen us pick up shares here? The reason why we don't follow the market on a broad base is we're looking for the undervalued. I do believe in the Warren Buffett concept of of finding undervalued stocks and having them go higher. That is what I look to do, and it's treated me very well through a 2008. It's treated me extremely well, even in the up years, because I am choosing individual stocks where I get to pick up another couple hundred shares of, of Ford, maybe 300 if you have a 1,000 shares of Under Armour, maybe only a couple hundred. It all depends on when we get you in but I can tell you the process works. And I'm just following a process that's proven itself time over time again. So take that, Lance. <laughs> um, great question. Any other questions you guys have? All right, with that, have a good evening. Again, there will be no trade findings and adjustments, but I will have an email coming out for you, everyone tomorrow. Blah, 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 what can I tell you? Um, I think that does it for me tonight. I'll see you Thursday morning. Have a good evening. I appreciate you being here with me. I do hope this helps you, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye.